Hello there. Actually, before we start this episode, I must ask you this. Do you consider your life a theory? That random sock you can't find. Did you really lose it? That time your dog you never had took your food. Did it really do that? Truly, it is my theory that sock goblins exist. Alright, alright. To completely clown on Matt Pat would be partly unjust, as some of his theories do hold water, but others aren't quite with it. That being said, I'm not here to judge game theories work, I'll leave that to manga Garmin, but instead I want to home in on the present stuff and how things just aren't how they've been for quite a while now. Nothing quite beats the originals like Pokemon vs Creationist or the Metroid Morph Ball is lame. Real kicker for sure. Without wasting any more time, let me elaborate on my original point of losing my interest with game theory. <laughs> I think it goes without saying that a majority of Matt's content revolves around Five Nights at Freddy's. After seeing a lot of success and potential for future theories as more games were released, leaving more story to be brought to the surface. With such a franchise rich with possibilities for future theories, it would only make sense that GT would be the hub for those who wanted to know more about Dead Kids or the Purple Guy. And it panned out well for everyone. People got answers, but with time it became clear that things were dragging along a bit. Now his ultimate custom knights need to wrap things up well, but Matt Pack persisted by dragging in the books, spin-off games, or future games afterwards. For someone who wasn't in the loop, and only got weekly or bi-weekly updates on the story, it became quite convoluted when the crying kid was painted as a puppet, or Golden Freddy. Then it turns out, he isn't dead, but is just a cyborg instead. However, I want to draw the line at Security Breach, since that is where most outrage came from, as Matt Pat compared Gregory, the protagonist, to the crying child and a whole host of jokes spurred from that one screenshot that Game Theory had dug into. Personally, I don't see this as true, since the information can be restricted to play against him, as the visual effects don't affect Freddy, despite him being a bot too. When Fanny appears, and Grigger being inside a charging station doesn't exactly mean that he too would be struck with many volts during a recharge. I doubt they'd let open wiring be near oversized birthday cakes though. If anything, I would expect a general mention of electricity being passed into him if he was, in fact, a machine in skin. I'm sure you can find more detailed explanations out there to construct your own opinions, but it just doesn't work for me. Perhaps this is just Steel Wool switching things up after Scott Cawthon became less involved, but who knows. It's just a theory after all. Such a conflict in opinion though makes me feel like game theory is losing the original edge it once had with FNAF 5 years, back when the harder questions were out there. Ultimately a lost interest that originally got thrown into the game and acts more of a way to burn time when Markiplier gets around to cover the base game. Let's move away a bit from FNAF now. What else is covered on the Game Theory channel? The, the latest games it seems, or when they're most prevalent at least. Description, Poppy's Playtime or Power Wash and Lay are all being covered when reaching the highs with other channels that bring in attention that can be capitalised on. I'm not saying he's trend hopping because he also covers Mario, Sonic and Pokemon at length on occasion, but I suspect that this is only because it is popular to begin with and intends to spend more time digging up evidence since there isn't a specific time limit set on these topics before people lose their interest in it. Hell, there's even a reason you're not going to see an update to the Goose Game video. It's because it fell out of the public eye for most and with it being pretty lawless besides housing a mischievous bird here or there, it's what makes Friday Night Funk and a good candidate with all the new content that gets thrown onto it, mod or not, I should say. Lastly, for this section, I just have to bring up the humour that Matt Pat brings to the table. I'm no comedian myself, as you may gather from my videos, so take what I say with a pinch of salt on this one, but I typically find it to be cringy, or it just doesn't quite fit into the tone of the video. Granted, sometimes these take place at the start, so the atmosphere doesn't crumble in on itself. Take the Ender Dragon video, for example, where the opening bit is a rip on the B-movie opener. It doesn't really work, or doesn't carry, since the dragon apparently has a body too big for its wings to carry, which is debatable when you compare the wings to the length of the body. Maybe it's too heavy? I just... Then gets followed up by a slow pan on Matt Pat's Minecraft avatar, 
of the Malaitra, only to crash down to the ground in a sluggish and janky way with no real punchline. Was was the second joke supposed to play off the first one? As a subvert of expectations? It just comes off as poorly executed and definitely needed further revision from others. Perhaps just isn't my style of comedy. I doubt many others would come across it. I feel some giddiness unless they were, you know, younger. <laughs> Before I jump into this section, I want you all to know that this is opinionated and you might want more or less of what I bring up next. To start with, I think it's justified to want to see smaller games receive the spotlight that so many others usually get tangled up in when it comes to theories. It's a genre that never usually gets touched upon, but be somewhat alluring to those who are used to seeing the same old, same old. RPG Maker games would be quite the spectacle if brought into the public eye of new audiences who might not have been exposed to it prior or previously, had some clues lined up but never capitalised on. The only thing is they usually have to explain their story in that game or be left with a confused player who only really scratched the surface of what could have been. The entire Strange Man series sets up separate stories well, but if pinned together it would be easier to make a linear story out of it all with someone like Matt Pat reviewing everything with the different endings or choices that might lead to something formerly left shrouded in mystery. Isn't like some other games as well where he has to wait for extra content to come out, so the last entry came out quite some time ago now. If they were feeling something more mainstream, then why not double in a bit of Walking Dead games by Telltale? Or, well, when they had the games at least. With four different seasons to pick from, you could certainly craft a theory based on something like the player's choices, whether they're more open to forgiving betrayals from people like Ben or Max as the seasons progress. Maybe do a theory on whether it is accurate to how AJ or Clementine grew up in the apocalypse, how they differ from one another given the circumstances presented. It's just like this that could have been thrown in to diversify the content more than just falling back into old habits. Speaking of habit, I don't think there's been a video not relating to some tragedy in some time now, with some conspiracy always having to be attached onto whether it's a baby Pokemon not being able to do a thing, or Mega Man being a failure for the future. However, to be fair, I understand the intrigue to flip the lid on what you know and portray things in a certain light, because it gets people thinking that maybe there are more humans in Animal Crossing. That features some unfair ruler that doesn't adequately pay her workforce. But that eventually dulls over time. I want to see a horror game have the foundation shaken, with the killer being some sort of good guy, or how a lesser known side character is some descendant of a god of peace. With such a premise being developed when the sky is the limit for other passive theories where a game supposedly frames the main character as a genocidal maniac. Don't post another theory about dead kids whole families kicking the buckets or someone being trapped inside a game to haunt it. We've seen it all before. You're probably wondering how I've got through a full video without bringing up the other spin-off channels Matt has made over the years. And that's down to the fact that I don't have many qualms with film theory compared to the main channel, since I don't get invested in TV series or films that get talked about on the channel. You want to call the Avengers a bunch of communists? Sure go ahead. Walter White was dead all along? I certainly don't care. Regarding food theory, I just don't touch the channel at all. The only occasional pop-up of it in my feed, I don't watch it at all. I don't want to know what's in my food. I don't want to get fucking told my beers or my vodka is apparently poisoning me more than it already has. To cap things off, this is just what I want to see from game theory and how it can change. And I don't expect them to listen or watch this video since it is one of my first. I'll probably get retconned at some point, but I want this to come off as more friendly advice and hard-hitting criticism. I know Matt Pat means well with his theories and wants people to think in a different light, whilst teaching them things that people don't really look at often. But just like anyone, there are gaps to pick at. If you did enjoy what I had to say, then I advise you subscribe to see more of what should be coming in the following days. More stuff along the lines of this kind of video is likely to pop up sooner or later, I'm sure. Now, with all that said and done, I've been VSM, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.